During the 16th century, most teachers were old soldiers who opened schools across the world in order to teach the next generation this sport. In the 18th century, it was used as training for French Napoleonic soldiers. Since the early 20th century, it has been a mainstream Olympic sport and continues to this day. Um, I think when I was when I was when I was very young, um, I was uh, I was really into football, and uh, so there's a few footballers. So, so my my team's Chelsea, and uh, Ray Wilkins was the Chelsea captain at that time. So uh, he was definitely one of them, and uh, also people like Sebastian Coe. Um, I can remember sitting there, you know, watching him winning the Olympics, um, and then the, the kind of the competition between him and Steve Aubert, and just, you know, seeing two British athletes, you know, uh, uh, leading the world in, in their disciplines was quite inspiring. I, I didn't get to watch much fencing as a child. Um, I'm a big football fan, though. I've been a Spurs fan all my life, and my favourite player was Robbie Keane as a child, and Gareth Bale, which is the best. Um, so you 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 were into football more. When did you first get interested in fencing, and what, how? Um, I started off fencing when I was nine. Um, I really liked Star Wars as a kid, and I used to play with the plastic lightsabers. Yeah. And I Star did it Wars. Every day. Yeah. So Star Wars was your inspiration, really. Yeah, it was. It's a bit weird. Mm. So uh, who who coached you over the years? Um, you're at quite a good standard now. Yeah, who coached you to get you to the standard you are today? Um, Ian has been coaching me for the whole like six years. Um, I've never been at another club or uh, with any other coach, so he's, just, he's a really good coach. I've got used to him and we've adapted to each other's coaching yeah. needs. What, what would you say makes him a good coach? Um, I think he's very experienced. Um, he went to the Olympics. Is really good and has he won any medals? Oh, he's won those. I, I helped him move house and he had boxes full of medals. How did you first get interested in fencing? Um, I did it through it was just through a friend really when I started, but after I had my first session, I really enjoyed it and it started coming. Um, have you ever felt pressured by a coach? Uh, yes, I feel like because of all our coaches are Olympic standards, I feel like that puts a bit of pressure to try and make it all the way to the Olympics. In your opinion, what do all good coaches have in common? All good coaches have a good side and a bad side. So a good side where they can be kind and then a strict side so they can do punishments and do what a coach should be able to do. In When you've been in competitions and you're fencing, have you ever felt that a judge's opinion has gone against you or been biased? Uh, definitely, yes. I've had quite a few judges that maybe have switched the points or not given because of a certain reason that shouldn't have happened. And when this happens, how do you handle it? So you can complain to your coach, and if they see it, maybe they'll tell the judge. Um, and you have to sign a form to say that you're happy with the score, so sometimes you can just not sign it and take it to the competition like manager. Can you talk about the highs and lows you've had as a fencer? Um, so some of the highs have been getting into the British Youth Championships. So that was out for London and only four qualified. And I've got into it two years in a row now. And probably some of the lows were just in my first competition. I'd say the, it was my first competition. I'd been doing fencing for about six months and I just got eliminated straight away and that set me back quite a bit because first competition we didn't go so well. First of all, fencing has introduced me to a lot of my friends, you know. A lot of my friends day to day are involved in my sport, um, which, you know, is really important. You know, it's really important to have 
you know, about that distance from the sport itself and somewhere where you can relax and, you know, do your thing outside of it. Um, it's also obviously taken me all over the world for competitions and training camps and that kind of thing, which would never have happened if, if I wasn't fencing. I would never have travelled to places that I've been, you know, like Uzbekistan, Korea, you know, these kind of places that I would never have been to if, if, uh, had I not been fencing. Um, it's also, it's given me a lot of, like, fun experience as well. You know, I've had lunch with uh, Prince Harry, at his um, big, big old house, and um, we've had you know, events such as like Saturday night takeaway. We've done like extra work for that kind of thing. Um, you know, like some modeling shoots. You know, some like clothing companies want to have you know, some kind of fencing, like high class element to it, um, which we get to do quite a lot. I started fencing when I was nine years old uh, down in Truro in Cornwall. Uh, and back then it was a very, very small club. Since then the, uh, the club has kind of grown and grown. And we've kind of gone from strength to strength down there. I've been working with my coach John Southfield, uh, who was actually the coach with me at uh, London 2012, which was, uh, which was amazing. And I've been working with him since, uh, since day one when I started fencing. So to kind of come up through the age groups and uh, competing internationally at kind of under 17 and under 20 level, and then kind of into seniors, uh, travelling with John the whole way was, uh, was pretty great and uh, kind of accumulating in, in 2012 uh, in the London Olympic Games. Um, so John's been with you throughout the whole journey. He's, and tell me a bit about your highs and lows throughout your fencing career. Yeah, I mean, uh, highs, I mean, would be competing at London 2012 in front of a, a home crowd, walking out uh, there in front of about 8,000 people with about 7,800 of them British was just like hair raising, it was absolutely incredible. A moment I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, Lowe's, obviously with all sportsmen, you get a lot of injuries, bad results, and you question yourself, and think, God, maybe I'm actually rubbish, maybe I'm no good at this. Uh, but then when you get that one day where you get that big result, it all, it all feels worth it again.